What is going on? I know one of the biggest things when it comes to selling an apartment is should I actually stage my apartment? There's so many different types of actual conditions of an apartment. You know, you obviously have the estate sale, you have the, the place that someone's been in there for 25 years, they just moved out or they had it as a rental property and then you have new developments and everything else. So let's just focus, and then you have lofts downtown. So let's just focus on the first, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna start with the size of the apartment. So if it's a really big place and you can't really see where your furniture would go, actually staging the apartment will actually look good. In new developments and you have an empty apartment and you say, okay, if the J line on the first floor is staged, I mean physically staged, it's gonna look really good for the 10th floor because you say, okay, this is where my bed is gonna go and then you see the view on the 10th floor. When it comes to smaller apartments, when it comes to non-lofts, when it comes to studios and one bedrooms and even two bedrooms, and you say, listen, is the cost actually worth it? If the apartment is worth $1.5 million, you don't want to bring in staging worth twenty dollars or $30,000 if it's not going to actually recoup the cost. There's a bunch of times that yes, maybe it does if it's worth three or $4 million and actually staging it for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 or even $100,000 is going to get you that price. But if you actually have an apartment that's say under $2 million or even 2.5 or $3 million, it doesn't really make sense. That's where virtually staging comes in. Virtually staging an apartment used to look terrible. You'd see, obviously it was virtually staged because you could see like the white outline between the furniture or the paintings and it wasn't really lined up and the angles were all weird. But the virtually staging right now is amazing. All right, so I highly recommend this actually sold a couple of our properties thus far because people said online, they looked at it, and if you look at a vacant apartment, we had this two bedroom, this is the best example. We had a two bedroom on the Upper West Side and it was an estate sale. It wasn't in terrible condition. It could have been in better condition, but the thing was when you look at it, it had almost a 40 foot living room. So you had a, and it was all open. So from the dining room all the way to the living room, there was just 40 feet of empty space. You say, that's big, that's great. I don't know what it looks like when it's actually staged or actually when there's furniture in there. So instead of actually staging it, I said, let's do a virtually staged. Photos came out amazing. I had it on my show sheets. I had it as the front page. So when you went on Street Easy or you went on the RLS, that's where it was. So what are the benefits of virtually staging? Number one is it's per photo. You pay per photo. So in other words, there's obviously a downside. So let's just talk about this. So we had one virtually staged that went all the way out to the living room, into the, from the dining room into the living room, and it looked beautiful. However, you can't come back the other way from the living room to the dining room, dining area, I should say, it's not really a room, just the dining area and have the exact same furniture because it's different angles. And I talked with the virtual stager and I said, hey, listen, is there any way we could just flip the furniture? Because when you look at it going out and then you have different furniture coming back in on the other photo, it kind of looks a little weird. You know, you're, you're kind of going through and it's like, well, this is look, this is the angle of, of the car you're about to buy, it's red. And then you turn the car around and it's blue and you're like, well, okay. So this is, this is the conclusion I came to, is that going out, which is the front picture, always have the, the bright photo as your number one, not where there's, you wanna have your first photo as where there's infinite space. So infinite space is going out towards the window. And I said, that's the one we're gonna virtually stage. And then you obviously have to have the, the non-virtually stage right after it, and then coming back towards the front door, away from the windows, no virtually staged. And the reason being I, I chose that is that I, I don't want people to get mixed up. I want people to see in person, and we held it up in person, we said, hey listen, this is the benefit of actually owning, say, not only this apartment, but this amount of space. You put your dining room table here. It's easy to direct them in person because you can, you can measure everything out. A table's gonna be here, a chair, 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 but we just need them to get to the apartment. That is the benefit of virtually staging. The benefit of virtually staging is also is when you take something that may not look good and you may not wanna do the work. Perfect example, I had another apartment, Upper West Side. It's a one bedroom and some people were commenting on the, uh, the wallpaper. 
So I said, instead of ripping down the wallpaper, bringing in someone to sand it down and repaint it, which is gonna cost thousands of dollars, and obviously do that in the, that was in the bedroom, but they also may, may have needed to do it in the living room. And obviously the floor was a little eh. So I said, let's virtually stage this. They put beautiful paint on the virtual stage. They put in obviously a bed and everything else. We moved to the living room. So instead of looking at the floors that needed to get rebuffed and everything else, you put in a rug and some furniture and a nice TV. They also repainted that. This is the thing is that you see what it could be. You're selling the dream. But if you just show a vacant bedroom with wallpaper that you want and a living room that's vacant with flooring that you may need to do and rebuff and then wallpaper that you also need to take down, re-sand and, and repaint, you can't see the vision in most consumer, most consumers can't see the vision and most agents cannot sell the vision unless they actually say, this is what it looks like when you come in and you, and you repaint the walls and you put in your beautiful furniture. This is what it looks like if you put down a, an area rug or you actually rebuff the floors and you, and you redo the walls. So the benefits are endless. You take an empty apartment that's probably not in condition that you need to renovate, but people can't see where their furniture would go. Then you also have the other part of the spectrum, which is this is an apartment that needs work. This is what it could look like. The drawbacks are is that people see it and they say, how much is this going to cost? I don't think I want to do the work because they see such a comparison difference between what they're actually seeing online and what the actual photo is. You can't actually just put the virtually staged photo. You have to put the virtually staged photo, then you put the actual photo. So people say, that looks like a lot of work or my furniture doesn't look like that. And then they say, I don't wanna see it because repainting, resanding, doing the renovation and things like that. The other downside is when it comes to a kitchen is you can't really flip a kitchen virtually. Yes, you can, uh, but it, it, it's really challenging. It's more expensive. And the reason being is the angles, the countertop, and obviously everything else when it comes to the appliances, the lighting, the cabinetry, all those things, it becomes very expensive and it doesn't really look that good. You kind of want to leave that up to a contractor that comes in there and says, hey, listen, what is this? What, what will this look like? What are the model photos? You ever look at model photos and you're like, this is clearly a model photo? That's good to a certain extent because if you go with a virtual stager that's bad, okay, they will actually make it look worse. It'll look clearly like right now, this is obviously a blue screen, you know, behind me. You know, this and this are not real, okay? And it's the exact same thing when it comes down to a virtual staging photo is that if people see the outline of the chairs and the, and the mirror and say the paintings and everything else, they're gonna say, well, obviously this is virtually staged. This is the conclusion virtually stage everything. It is worth, not everything, virtually stage, obviously if it has people's furniture and it looks good and the wallpaper doesn't need to get done or the living room and everything like that doesn't need to get done, you don't do it. But the, the benefits, the cost benefit outweighs, it's not even close, it's almost like 50 to one, okay? In-person staging, which I'm gonna bring up on another video, in-person staging may not be worth it may not be worth it for the following reasons. It's very expensive. If you rent it per month, which are most of them, they, they have a monthly, I'll talk about that in another video, but they have monthly contracts. In other words, a three month minimum. But if you sell it after the first month, they take it away and you're like, did I actually really need to stage it? This is the thing with virtually staged. We put it on the market. People were commenting on the wallpaper and they couldn't see where their stuff would go. I said, let's virtually stage this. So we flipped around our marketing campaign and made it a lot easier for people to visually see themselves there, what they could do, what it could look like, what if it had actual the paint that they, they want instead of the wallpaper that they don't want. So highly recommend you do the virtually staging upfront. It was a mistake on one of the apartments is that we didn't do it upfront. So all the people that came through or all the people that saw the listing, they passed it by because they said, I don't wanna do the work or I can't see myself living there. So highly recommend you do it upfront on the final case because you can only enter the market once. You can only enter the market once. You can't re-enter the marketplace. If you re-enter the marketplace, in other words, you put it up for sale, it doesn't sell, and then you have to take it down and then you have to put it back up. You have to have either a new price 
virtually staged photos, actual in-person staging, or you have to do something else with the marketing. Maybe do a video, maybe do better photos, maybe do a better floor plan, maybe you have to renovate, maybe you have to change out the appliances or repaint it or actually do the construction that people want you to do instead of have them do it. There has to be something different. So instead of doing that and having your home sit, this is the best way to do it. Highly recommend you virtually stage. Highly, highly recommend you virtually stage. So if you guys have any questions, not only with virtually staging or who we use or maybe rooms that you want because it's per photo. And like I said, if you do virtually staging one way, you can't do virtually staging with the exact same furniture and, and everything coming back the other way. Maybe that's something they'll do in the future. However, right now that's a limited kind of uh, drawback to virtually staging. You can't do the same photo from one vantage point back to the other vantage point. So any questions on who we use, which rooms to, to do, or you know, should you actually virtually stage or the cost or things like that, leave in the comments below. Shoot me an email, charles at bpi.live. If you guys have any questions, any not only personal questions, but uh, pers <laughs> personal questions, I mean actual questions personally about real estate, charles at bonestin.com. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys.